Hey Dungeoneers, Luke here, welcome back to Black Desert Online, and today we're making the guide you've all been waiting for. It's the Silver Grinding Guide. So come on along, let's get you rich. Alright guys, now a few little things before we start. First things first guys, please note that if you have pets or don't have pets, is going to have a significant increase or decrease on how much money you are going to make per hour. Pets make a huge difference in this game in terms of picking up loot for you, so if you have them, great. If you don't have them, don't worry too much about it. Wait a little bit, get some farther down the line, but just note that your, you know, efficiency in terms of money is going to go down if you don't have any. And on top of that, guys, I hate to say it, everyone knows that I'm gonna say it, but what class you are playing is going to have a slight impact on how fast you are going to grind. Obviously guys, a level 6 Awakened Wizard is going to grind a little bit faster than a level 56 Awakened Warrior in a side-by-side -side race. That's just the nature of the classes. There are no good or bad classes, they all have their pluses and minuses, but just know that in terms of grinding speed, your class is going to make a difference. Beginner Mode Alright guys, so the very first place we're going to talk about is going to be Sonal's Camp. Now Sonal's is without a doubt the best beginner grinding spot. The monsters are really not that hard guys, they're really really weak. I think they're only about level 50 and they have pretty low defense, but on top of that, the most important thing is there are loads of them. <laughs> there are literally thousands of these guys scattered around. You can mow them down super easy, guys. And the best part is all the stuff that they drop, even though it is kind of heavy and they do drop a lot of it, I'm talking two to four pieces of their turn in uh, per mob, you can turn it in just north of the camp. Like, you don't have to drive across the country on a horse to turn them in to get a decent profit. It's right north of the camp. So all you gotta do is just grind until you're heavy, drive like literally 30 seconds north, turn them in, jump over the wall and come back, and you can just keep doing that over and over and over again. Now in terms of the what they drop, uh, besides their turn and stuff, you're also looking at Blackstone's uh, armor and weapon, but you're gonna be looking at that for most grinding areas. But on top of that, they drop some Barris equipment and then very, very rarely can drop Ancient Relic Crystal Shards but they are extremely rare. However, if you get them, it's pretty much, you know, a mill in the bank right off the bat. So, uh, Sonal Camp, guys, if you're brand new to the game, you know, you have a really low level character or just no gear whatsoever, head on over there. That's going to give you a very good starting area and you can pretty much grind it with no gear whatsoever. So you might as well just grind there if you're new. So head on over there, guys, get yourself a solid base income going and I'll catch you guys at the next grind spot. Alright guys, let's say you're not feeling the Sonals. Let's say you're feeling bad killing all those small fluffy creatures, and you want to kill something a little more evil, or you're just feeling really really lucky, then head on over to Hexay Sanctuary. The monsters in Hexay are about the same difficulty level as the ones at Sonals, maybe a little bit harder if you're like at their level, which is around level 50. They might be a little bit more difficult, but there's something very interesting going on at Hexe Sanctuary. Now the thing about Hexe is the standard income for it is lower by far than Sonal Camp. If you're just getting the turn in stuff, getting the silver and the usual, you know, Barris, Uria, that type of thing, weapons, all that is a little bit lower. In fact, it's almost a lot lower. However, very, very rarely, you will get two major items at Hexe Sanctuary. You can one, get yourself a whole bunch of ancient relic fragments, which as I mentioned before, are about one mil in the bank each, or you can get the very elusive Witch's Earrings. And the Witch's Earrings, guys, if you get one dropped at Hexay, it is an instant 12 mil in the bank for you. Because that Witch's Earring is a top tier PVE accessory that gives some crazy damage and people try and get them really, really high in terms of enhancement and break them literally all the time. So there's always a supply and demand for them, but not necessarily as much of the supply as there is of the demand. So if you can be a part of that supply, you're going to be making quite a bit of money. Of course, like I said, it is very, very rare, but get that node to level six. And if you're feeling bored with Sonals, go on over to Hexe. Maybe you're feeling lucky. And who knows? Maybe you'll bankroll off of some witches' earrings and relic fragments. Intermediate. Alright guys, the very first intermediate grinding spot we're going to be talking about 
is Helm's Post. Now, Helm's Post is an interesting place to grind. It offers you some pretty decent money and some okay items to sell, and you can actually make some pretty good silver there. However, if you haven't gotten your Asula accessories yet, then it immediately shoots up in terms of what I think you should be grinding at. It shoots up that list really quick because this is one of the best places to grind for Asulas since both the rings and the earrings drop here. So if you don't have your Asula set yet, you might as well be grinding here. Try and get your Asulas as well as trying to get all those helmet fragments turned in for cold hard cash and try and get some of the items that they drop. Now, something important to remember here, guys, is the helmet fragments you get out of these guys are not a turn-in. You don't have to take them into any specific NPC. You can just sell them to any old vendor, but they are pretty heavy. So maybe once you hit about 2,000 of them, go turn them in, sell them. They're about 850 silver apiece. Make a decent income, sell off your items, and keep your eye out for that Asula set. All right, guys, the second intermediate grinding spot we are going to be talking about is, of course, the Wandering Rogues Den. Now, the thing about Wandering Rogues, guys, is the silver you will get from grinding this, as opposed to Helms, is significantly better. It makes way more money so much faster. However, it is quite a bit harder. The regular mobs are about the same difficulty as the Helms mobs. However, there's a whole bunch of violent elite monsters walking around with the packs that will come and seriously mess your day up if you're not prepared for them. So if you're finding Helms to be a bit of a challenge, maybe stay around there, but if you're just breezing through them and looking to really step up your game, head on over to the Wandering Rogues Den. See if you can take down a couple of the violent mobs first, because if they sneak up on you guys, it's, it's gonna be a bad time. So make sure you can handle them before you try grinding the regular ones. And if you can't handle them, it's definitely an upgrade. So head on over there. And this is by far, guys, one of the best methods of making silver uh, pre-Valencia, which is where the desert is, pre-Valencia, it is probably the second best that I can think of in terms of pure grinding for silver, maybe even the best, depending on how fast you're going. All right, guys, now before we go on to our expert grinding areas, I just want to give a quick shout out to the Helm's Cave. If you are in the main grinding spot for Helm's and go towards the back cliff, you'll see an entrance that goes down into a mine. If you go into that mine, the mobs are going to be somewhat similar to what you've been fighting in the regular Helm's area, plus some additional bigger guys that are a lot harder. I would say that Helm's Cave is actually more difficult than the Wandering Rogue's Den, but it does have a chance of dropping the Ancient Guardian Seal, as well as a Scarlet Necklace, and both those items are worth a lot of money. So if Helm's isn't really offering you a challenge and neither is Rogue's and you're not really feeling either of them anymore, head on down to the Helm's Cave, see if you can get a couple of those rare drops, and you can actually make some pretty decent money down there as long as you're able to survive. Expert. Alright guys, it's time to move on to expert mode, the big boy grind zones. And of course you already knew the first one was going to be Sazen's Garrison. Now Sazen's is by far the most popular grind spot in the game right now, so it might be a little difficult unless you're on a really unpopulated server to get yourself some solo time. However, if you can get yourself some solo time, it is probably the best money in the game, except for the ultra end game grinding areas. Just in terms of money, guys, this is pretty much the end. You are going to be grinding Sazen's forever until you make it to the desert. Now, if you're not strong enough for Sazen's, but you are strong enough to do the intermediate grinding levels, maybe try joining a guild or just asking in server chat if you can get in on someone's Sazen group. If you have some pets, people are more likely to let you in anyway, because then they can just grind faster, get more items picked up, and just sell it through the party share. So if you can't find yourself a group, guys, go in guild chat, go in the server chat, or, you know, even just in the comments of this video, or even in the Discord, just ask if somebody wants to grind Sazen's with you. There are always people there, always people looking to grind, and a lot of people willing to help you out. Alright guys, something I'm going to give a quick shout out to that is a little off the wall and most people don't recommend is going to be Bashams. Now the thing about Bashams guys is if you are already going to be going out into the desert, it is probably the worst money that desert grinding can get you. 
However, it does actually make some decent money, uh, pretty comparable to what you'll get at Sawzen's, maybe a little bit less. However, while you're there, you are going to be getting probably the best experience in the game. Basham's gives you an absolutely insane amount of experience for grinding there, as well as also dropping you some decent silver. So if you're not, you know, struggling really, really badly for silver, and you kind of want to multitask in order to get some levels as well, try heading over to Basham's. The scrolls that they drop are worth a couple mil a piece. It's relatively decent silver. I mean, it's not great. But like I said, you're going to be getting decent silver and insane experience at the same time. So if you're looking to level up as well as make money, it cannot be recommended uh, enough to head on over to the Basham's camp. There's there's millions of them there, guys. It is so much experience. Like, I can't even believe how fast you'll level up grinding here, as well as making decent money if you got the luck to get those drops. All right, guys, now before we go, I also want to mention that pirates can be some amazing grinding silver as well. Unfortunately, my character does not own a boat yet, and I'm not quite at the level where I can go out and grind them, so I don't have any footage. However, if you have yourself a boat, you're a decent level, and you got some decent gear, go on out and give pirates a try. It is pretty far away, and it's pretty complicated in how to grind there. You have to have certain setups going on so you can store as much stuff as possible. But if you can make it out there and do it, guys, it is also some fantastic money. Cannot recommend it enough. Unfortunately, I just don't have it on this character quite yet. All right, Dungeoneers, welcome to the end game. Now, I'm just going to give a quick run through of what you're going to be doing down here. Hopefully, by the time that you get to end game grinding, you're going to have a pretty decent idea of around where your gear should be at and about where you should be grinding. However, in order, I would usually recommend you go Fogans, then Nagas, Pilaku, Gatekeepers, and Gyphon Temple. In that order, guys, that is going to be your end game grinding goal. If you get to the point where you can grind Fogans and Nagas pretty easily out there in the desert, you are pretty much approaching the end game area, or at least the bulk of the end game area where you're going to be trying to min max your character. Now, Pilaku is also good if you're playing a very, very good class or a not so great class, but ultra geared. And if you can handle all of that, guys, give Gatekeepers or Gyphon Temple a try. Now, Gatekeepers and Gyphon is the ultra, ultra, ultra endgame, like way out there, guys. Like Gatekeepers and Gyphon is like the hardest content in the game, but it is, of course, the best money in the game. And that is your end goal, guys. If you get to the point where you can grind Gatekeepers or do Gyphon Temple, you are pretty much done. Like, you have beaten Black Desert, guys. That's it. So once you get to that point, you don't need really to focus on guides anymore. You're already in the top 1% of the game. So once you get to that point, you are finished. Now, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a comment down below. Maybe, maybe even give a little bit of a thumbs up. I'm not usually one to ask for those, but since you guys have started thumbing up the videos, I have gotten some crazy, crazy levels of exposure, guys, and it's all thanks to you. So thank you so much for watching. I'm glad that you guys are enjoying the series, and I hope that you aren't too, too mad for me, you know, having this one be a little, a little delayed. It, it's a little bit delayed, but thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next video.